that begs the question, what the heck are we going to talk about right here when you hit the live button? Because we've already talked it and settled it all. Yeah, it's a done deal. That's it. I'm hitting finish. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. We don't, we don't even have to do a show. We, <laughs> we don't even have any viewers yet, so it doesn't matter. We, we went live tonight. It's one of those days I really don't care anyway, one way or the other. So, you know. There's still no viewers. There's still no viewers. Um, so. Well, we are live on YouTube. I just got the notification. Oh, we got three people. There actually is somebody tuning in. Maybe that. Maybe there's some lag going on. Okay, wait. Yeah, well, it see. does take a few minutes, you know. I mean, that's kind of why we sit here and BS for a few minutes, and then we run the countdown and the intro and all that. You know the drill. Although, I, we may change that format. Once we get out of the doldrums of political stuff, once we get out of the boredom of political stuff through the summertime, we may change the format up just slightly. Wait a minute. You just said the boredom of politics. Yeah. It's I don't been find a boring po- week. I don't find politics to be boring at all. In fact, that provides me the entertainment that I need. It's your weekly dose of entertainment, huh? Like, I mean, who knew that Dodie Horton and Chris Turner were running against Raymond Cruz. Wait. I had no idea. Did you know what? that? No, that's news to me, newsflash. Yeah. They're both qualifying in House District 8, and they're both going to run against Raymond Cruz. You know how I know that? How? Because they got more signs in Raymond Cruz's district than they've got in House District 9. Oh, well, yeah, there is definitely a major sign war going on. And we do have a few people watching now. Ricky Bridges is here. Val Baker's here. Glad to have y'all. And, you know, y- y'all know the drill. Tag some friends and all that kind of good stuff. So, Well, let's do our countdown and we can come back and we can yeah. solve all the world's problems. And, hey, if you're just tuning in, uh, do us a favor. Share the show out. Let's get the viewership up. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about... Show some video of a, uh, how would you describe it, Rex? A contentious Bossier City Council meeting today? Almost a cage match. Yeah, it was getting there. It was getting there. And Tommy Chandler, Tommy the Chandler, I'll just say it that way, he laid down the law on the council. He Well, hold on a minute. He had to do a tag team. This is going well, straight back to WWF days. He had to do a tag team, and we'll talk about that or show well, that. Well, I'm just I'm just telling you, he did his best Ric Flair impression I think you're going to get out of him. I mean, he laid law down on the council. Well, maybe. Maybe his pair dropped about an inch, but that's about it. I'll be, I'll be nice tonight. Because I actually, I, I'm going to side with Tommy tonight. I don't know where I'm at yet on that. I mean, I guess as we go through this, I'll determine my place. But I, there's a few shots I want to take in there. But, hey, we, we've got some action going on in the 26 JDC. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll hit the countdown, do the intro, and uh, take it from there. How about that? Folks, y'all know the drill. Me. Get you a stiff drink. Pop some popcorn real quick. We'll be back in about three minutes. Tag your friends, like Duke said. Let everybody know we are online. And we are talking about politics, even in the doldrums of the summer. We'll be right back. Just you know, they feel helpless, they don't feel heard, they have nowhere to turn. In all honesty, you know, we try to lay low a little bit um, because of the fear that we would not be able to camp there. And I titled it A Shot Across the Bow of the Good Old Boys. Hello everybody, I've, uh, I don't think I've ever done a video before on here, but uh, yeah, I wanted to tell y'all what frustrates me a little bit about permits. Cockroach of the Week is... Drum roll, please, Allie Feaster Smith. We can't be apathetic about what's going on in our state. We have to all pull up our bootstraps and get on on top of this. So you're right. There's a problem out there. I mean, and and, and, man, you can see it everywhere. Well, look, we we have allowed government to become our wherewithal to everything. Well, I, I've not heard my name in stable or Baton Rouge in stable in the same sentence in a long time. <laughs> it's 
You're about to be killed by his Zamboni. Or you're gonna die in five minutes! This Bossier Watch live broadcast is brought to you by David B. Womack for all your contracting and construction needs. The Outdoor News, fishing and outdoors for our area. Acadiana Mortgage, over 23 years in the mortgage business. Pelican Training and Consulting is an IWTP customized training provider with over 25 years of success to show for it. Call them for a free consultation today. Pelican Training and Consulting matches employers with 50-plus employees with training dollars. Smarter Geek, making technology easier. And the many supporters, donations, and folks sharing information and watching out for Bozier. Now, grab your popcorn and a drink. Here we go. I mean, <laughs> wh why ruin it and do notes now? We haven't done notes in like, I don't know, three or four shows. Well, I'm sitting here looking at this stuff on our Facebook Messenger that I need to pull off of there, and I need somewhere to dump it. I, usually, I have our file folder open. I have that open. I have our notes open to where we're we're going through. It's all scripted and all this. But, folks, you're seeing us. Wait, no wait a minute. You said that you said the evil word scripted. See, we we have to have that appearance that we're just winging it, and literally tonight we are winging it. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. See that See. Awkward, that awkward moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing to do. I don't know. Look, folks. I, I told Duke before the show that I'm kind of in one of those yeah whatever moods. So you know, y'all y'all don't take it personally and or anything like that. I'm just you know I'm here. That's about it. Okay. Well. I can't pull what I wanted to pull. Oh, where are we going to go first? Do we want to take a stroll around Bossier City first, or do we want to take a stroll around the 26 JDC, or do we want to talk a little shop overall in the whole parish, the whole political landscape per se? Because I was taking a shot just a minute ago about, you know, Turner and, and Horton are running against Raymond Cruz because they got all the signs. Yeah. I want to hear more about that, so I'm kind of interested in that. Well, I mean, look, you had reapportionment, but good grief. It, it, you start getting into Bossier City and you start getting up north of Airline Drive and into Benton, and, <clears throat> I mean, it's nothing but Doty Horton and Chris Turner signs everywhere. Well, It's, but it's not even their district. Well, I was going to say, now, I haven't paid attention to the new district lines or whatever, but when they did the redistricting, I mean – where do their lines actually stop? Do we know? Because full disclosure, I ain't paid attention to it. I don't think the lines change that much. I don't 100% know exactly where the lines are, but I'm pretty confident that the lines, I'm not in the district, and I'm confident that it's airline drive is not in the district. And <laughs> Well, there's a, but look, there's something to be said in marketing for, uh, name recognition, and brand exposure. I mean, because, look, let's face it. You know, you've got all the, the businesses up and down Airline Drive, a lot of the folks in that district, even after the 
reapportionment or realignment or redistricting or whatever are going to visit those businesses and they're going to see a Chris Turner or a Doty Horton sign or Raymond Cruz sign. And, you know, so even if they aren't technically in their district, they're going to be visiting those areas. That didn't come out right. But anyway, you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. And, and hey, <clears throat> yeah, I see Barry Butler. Swan Lake Road is not in Doty's district. Well, yeah. But, you know, like I said, it's still it's brand recognition. I mean, maybe they're going to bury, maybe somebody from Doty's district is going to need to wash their clothes and they're going to visit the laundromat. Well, hey, did you did you see who isn't getting a pass in this uh, election cycle? And that is Robert Mills. He now well, has an opponent. I, he's got an opponent and he's got a bunch of people with knives out. And they're not even trying to stab him in the back. They're coming from the front and the sides. I don't understand this. We we kind of alluded to this, what, show and a half ago or what, a couple of shows ago. But I'm still a little confused about the politics making strange bedfellows saying. Well, I mean, there's a lot to unravel here in this thing with the Senate race. And, and you know, and it all, I, I don't know. There, there's a lot of speculation. Um, and, and I, look, I think, I, I think it was you and I wrecked off the, you know, off the show, just you and I having a conversation that the lines of demarcation are so blurred right now. I don't know what team is what team anymore. I don't, I, I don't who, either. I don't know what team, you know, cause you throw out there the fact that there's rumors that Ryan Gaddy is on this team or on that team. And there's rumors that Mike Johnson is on this team or that team. And you don't know what's up or down anymore. And well, let me some share this, some of let me some of this. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, let me share something that I haven't even shared with you yet. But I got a phone call a few days ago that said, and I'm not going to say who just yet because it's a whisper cam. I think it's a whisper of a whisper campaign. But a certain representative was throwing shade. That's a good good modern term. Throwing shade on Mills over some of the allegations from the last Senate race around Baton Rouge. Now, again, I think it's a whisper of a whisper campaign, but I got that phone call the other day too. So it's like they're taking the gloves off this time. I, and I don't, they've turned on Mills and. I, is it just because he voted to bust the spending cap? I, really? Well, I don't know. Did 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 they all have a food fight? Because it sure sounds like it. I mean, word on the street is is that that you know I heard that Mills had things that he wanted getting uh, in the budget, and with people voting against breaking the spending cap, you know that. But it's never that him. Sim- so it's then never he that went simple. Them, and then it's a big food fight, and the ultimate loser is all of Northwest Louisiana. But you know as well as I do, it's never that simple. That's just what they. That's just you know what they want you to see in front of the curtain. That it really has to do with a lot of other things, and that's they just right. use that as the front side of the curtain. And, and then there's the people that say that, oh, well, you know, if you were working with the governor, you would have gotten all these things, you know, without saying what you would have all compromised right. or what you wouldn't have compromised. And I've got those phone to, calls to Ryan would Gaddy have, would have solved all the world's problems with the governor and we would have blah, blah, blah. I've gotten all those phone calls to. Yeah, but I, I will say this. I think the one consistent thing that maybe all of these candidates see is that the potential for a new conservative proactive governor that will carry northwest louisiana um and and i i'm highly confident that he's probably going to show some love and appreciation to northwest louisiana i mean he he spent more time up here than the existing governor i can promise you that um 
I think they all want to be on that bandwagon. They want to be there in the legislature when this governorship happens because they want to be able to reap the fruits of this governorship. I, I think that's what a lot of this is about. Yeah, and hey, maybe we'll be able to uh, get the new governor on the show one one day. Well, we can we can make that happen. Um, but here's the thing: if all these insurgent folks that are wanting to come in there and say that, you know, the, the, the I'm playing devil's advocate here, that they should have been working with this governor. Um, well, what happens if they get crossed with? the next go what if we change what if we have a bunch that would be working with they're not working with this governor but they would be working with the next governor a conservative governor what if we change to people who would would not so much work with a conservative governor and would have worked more with a moderate to liberal governor are we going to lose again Uh, that's a fair point but i don't know we'll just have to see how it all plays out We'll have to see. Okay, so I'm doing a little technical stuff here. Um, Let's see. I'm seeing a lot of people in the comments. You know, Barry, hey, glad to see you here. Val Baker, glad to see you here. And I'm not seeing, you know, of I see there's about 40 people watching the show. Let us know in the comments. Let us know you're here. Say hi. Um, You know, I can't. Rex, I think, can I can't see who all is watching the show. Uh, tune, actually, tune I can't. I can't really either, unless I bring up the. Uh, I can see where we're streaming to, but I can't see everybody unless I pull it up on my phone. So, yeah, anyway. y'all, let us know you're here and let us know what you think. Um, yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, let us know what you think. What is the deal with Robert Mills and everybody dogpiling on Robert Mills? I mean, like I said, not that I'm trying to carry Mills' water because. Uh, you know, but he has been a straight up guy. As a matter of fact, we probably need to just call him and get him on the show in the next few episodes. Say, hey, what's the deal? What's going on here? Why no? Why yeah. nobody like you no more? Well, you know, I mean, look, your buddy Adam Bass is probably going to have to be coming on the show. I mean, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Y'all have a working relationship. How about we're that? Fr- we're friendly with each other, yes. Y'all have a working relationship. So yes. I would assume that. But, you know, here's the thing, though. I, I think that you and I are going to, I mean, this is going to be problematic because, you know, we're friends with these people. But at the same token, we got a responsibility to be critical of them as well. Yeah, yeah. And, they do something uh, we don't like or whatever, we need to ask them about it or call them out. But again, you're, you're right. Because one of the things that we don't want to do when we interview people is get them on here just for a gotcha deal. You know, we exactly we don't script any questions. If a candidate says, well, I'm just not going to talk about that. Well, guess what? Either they're not going to be on the show or that's it. Or we will talk about it. But we're not here to do a gotcha if they're willing to take the time to come on the show, which they don't have to do. Um, You know, we want to be respectful of that, but it doesn't mean that we won't ask them tough questions. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I think in every one of these races, you know, you and I have been discussing about having, um, I hate to say a debate, but that's what it is, is a debate, but having the candidates in each one of these races sit down. And I can tell you in, in the case of, uh, Dodie Horton and Chris Turner, I mean, they both have agreed to sit down with us on the date that we schedule to have a debate in the format like we've done in the past. Yeah. You know, it, it isn't us asking the questions, but it's, you know, the candidates uh, making the questions that they want for both of them to answer. So right. and it's not us doing it. And then we will take questions from the live viewers and we'll pose those questions. So that one is going to happen for sure. Um, as far as Robert Mills and Bass, I mean, we didn't know there was even a race until a week ago. So I'm pretty confident that we're going to need to do it with that one. And I will say that there's people that have the Alan Seaball uh, McConathy race. There's people that have wanted us to do that one as well, too. So well, maybe maybe we can get Seabiscuit on. 
<laughs> maybe finally he'll make an appearance <laughs> on Bozier Watch. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, ask Jill Dillingham about Robert Mills. Hmm, interesting. All right. So what's next up on the agenda? I mean, I, I've got the topic sitting here on the little deal. It says uh, Amanda versus Chris Smith. And i got to say, they did have uh, an exchange of dialogue at today's city council meeting. I honestly was watching the city council meeting over some other issues you wanted me to keep an eye on. And all of a sudden, here's Amanda and Chris going at it. And Tommy even spoke up. So shall we go ahead and uh, cover that? Uh, let's go to it. And, and it. we got to follow up on this 26 JDC stuff because in the Robert Berry case, we have, we have, as I mean, I'm no lawyer, but it appears we have a recusal of a judge from the case. Ah, so uh, Stinson recused himself? It, that's what I'm understanding is Stinson recused himself from the case of Robert Berry. So, well, I, I I don't know exactly why I'm only speculating, but he was a city attorney for the town of Benton. The town of Benton did have an appointee to the board, which was not Robert Barry. You know, he was appointed by the police jury. Maybe that's the stretch. I don't know. And, and in the document that I read in which I wish we would have had some more time to pull it up. But in the document that I read, I saw that Alex Vozella was there representing Robert Berry, not the Cypress district, Robert Berry. So that means, and, and Mashoda was there representing Robert Berry as well too. So that means the taxpayers are paying for Robert Berry to do an office hold, paying for him to defend it. Yeah, all, all of you out put, there. Putting the bill for this. Here we and, go. I, I, I called it. And Gary White, Gary White, he, he's, obviously rubber stamping it and all the rest of your board members. So who is Gary White? The Benton mayor, the Benton council. They're the guys that appoint Gary White that enables all this. I mean, that's, that's one of them. Um, mm -hmm. Bozier city council, all those guys. Yeah. And Greg Bell poses a good question. Why did Stinson wait all the way up to the 22nd June court date to recuse himself? Yeah. I mean, I guess he could have recused himself at any point in time. Hey, I got a question for you. This is. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We know why this is, this is not hard. The why is, is you drag it out so that it doesn't see the courtroom until after the AG race. So that well... if you potentially get a new AG, they just won't pursue it, and Robert Barry is golden. He can continue to fleece I, the taxpayers of the Cypress District. I don't see Doug doing that. I'll just leave it at that. I, I don't see Doug doing that. I, I'm not going to speculate as to why Doug did it. He's probably got a justifiable reason, right. but either way, the result of the action is more of a delay right. but however it oh, come yeah, to the, be the lawyers Ayers and shelton you know mr curtis no you can't ask no questions himself they're just laughing all the way to the bank absolutely and mashota he knows the game oh yeah he, he knows the game for for uh, i mean good grief yeah uh, let's see. Our good friend Ryan Haygood says the Cypress district also broke the law by hiring a lobbyist. Your tax money at work. Uh, I would argue that they probably did as well. Um, but again, the only way to enforce that is either the DA's office and Skyler ain't doing that. We would have to get the uh, complaints were already filed with the ethics board and with the AG's office, so the AG would have to prosecute something, or we would have to file suit as citizens to do it. And who's got the bankroll to do that? It it's the it's same thing. It's the problem. It's the same problem that we see in Washington D.C. There's no accountability. You know, there's a a double standard, and I'm sorry to say the DA's office is not going to hold the Cypress District accountable. Yeah. They're not going to do it. So here's an interesting comment from AJ and Mandy Foy. Uh, so is the new person on the Cypress district getting paid, paid the big bucks? Who's the new person on the Cypress district? Let us know in the comments. Who is that? 
I'm guessing the new person on the Cypress District Board would have to be the attorney that has the suite with Kelly the judge, Long. Kelly Long. Oh, yeah, but she, they get paid like 40 bucks a meeting. I mean, they ain't big bucks. They didn't even cover the gas. Or, well, right, but that's the new person. Yeah. I mean, there, uh, unless there's some matter. other new person, I don't know. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. I mean, look, Ruttenbuck was at the last meeting. I well, mean, that's, that's true. And Butch Ford was there too. Hey, I got a question. So I heard an interesting rumor. Let me see what you think. Um, you think Philip Rogers is going to run for police juror again? And I don't want to yeah. go much further than that. Well, but I want to pose know, a question. You know, I've been hearing whispers that maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, but. I think he's running again because, I mean, Dad Gun. Yeah, think, why not? You think the Gob Network is going to yield that seat to anybody that is not on the team? Yeah. I mean, I mean maybe- look, I, I got to say, as a former political kind of guy, that if somebody were to run against Philip Rogers for that police jury seat, what is it, District 3 or whatever, I think, maybe or whatever. Anyway, I mean, there's enough audio and video footage of Philip sticking his foot in his mouth. It shouldn't be difficult to defeat him. But, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't f- from around the area that really don't, you know, have a, a huge idea of what's going on other than seeing some stuff in the newspaper, but they won't associate that with Philip. So, I don't know. Look, you know, I here here's where I'm at on Philip. You know, I never had anything against Philip from the beginning. Right. I mean, I, I knew him before. Yeah, I, I like Philip. Different. He's a nice guy. I, yeah, I liked him. I, I I liked him. I still like him, even though I don't think he likes me, but that's fine because of the show. That's fine. But I think, you know, here's probably, here's a guy. He probably had, you know, probably good intentions of getting in up there and doing something good. He got up in there and he fell right in line. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't rock, he didn't rock the boat. He made commitments when he ran, people elected him based on those commitments and he didn't follow through on those commitments. So he shouldn't be mad at anyone but himself. Yeah. But you, you, that's it in a nutshell without a doubt. Okay. Let's move on to the, um, Oh, the city council meeting here. So let me see if I can swap screens and do this the right way. Ha, look at there. The city council meeting. Um, Let's see. Make sure. I'm going to hit play just to make sure the audio comes through real quick. Everybody. Yep. Good audio. Okay. So where do we want to start? Um, well, I, obviously we start at the beginning and we work our way to the end, to the crescendo where Tommy, the Chandler, basically lays the law down in Bossier City. I mean, mayor, mayor extraordinaire right there. All right. So, yeah, let's back up and I, I guess we'll just start at the beginning where they introduce the ordinance to repeal the ordinance 76 of 2019. Uh, let's just start there and we'll move on with it. How about that? Yep. Introduce an ordinance to repeal Ordinance 76 of 2019. First reading. Mr. President, I can make, make a motion to continue number two till August 16th. Now, if I remember correctly, like they've already continued this before, so they just keep on kicking the can down the curb? <clears throat> yeah, so what a lot of people are like scratching their heads or saying, okay, guys, what... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so fire, fireworks inbound by the way ordinance the 76 of 2019 oh come on you got to give me a hint what the heck are you guys talking about okay so many many moons ago there was a time where you had a mayor that basically was like well kind of like tommy's acting tonight it was kind of like <laughs> aloof was, in fact it was the previous mayor but uh, who, who's naming names you know, it was kind of like, you know, I'm the mayor, by gosh, and I'm going to run this city how I want to run this city. And little old Penny Council, you're not going to get in my way and you're not going to say nothing. You're not going to get in the way. And the council said, well, in fact, quote, and this is a real quote, quote, well, we will show this mayor who runs this city. We're going to cut his B-A-L-L. 
Oh, you that put is, them uh, rest is, off, uh, and we will put them on our shelf, and we will let him have them when we choose. End quote. Mm, heard yeah. heard that, Adam. I heard that with my own ears mm-hmm. back some time ago, and in fact, that council did exactly that. And from from then until today, they have been doing that. So what they do what they're doing here is they're controlling the purse strings and you know any new hire or position or whatever it has to be approved by the council and so tommy the chandler obviously took the time and started listening to somebody or somebody gave him some counsel and said hey you know what you need to grow a spine and put up a little fight here so here we go the meeting, the next meeting in August, it would be the first or the fifteenth. Fifteenth. I'm sorry. Is there a second? Second. They got a motion made by Mr. Tommy's Smith. looking Mr. around like hmm. item number two and second, Mr. Smith. Discussion council. Hmm. Like, hey guys, can I, can I put in here just a second? Now we, I've written y'all letters. I've I've texted. I mean, emailed y'all, and we you, we you talked about this. Over yeah. and over again. Hey, text and email. We should request those too. Thanks for the thanks for the little heads up there, Tommy. Yeah, he's texted and emails. We'll we'll be certain to ask for that. But I, I doubt we even get a response because they don't acknowledge us. Um, but there's a, there's also Rex. I wanted to I wanted to fill in the gaps a little bit more on this deal here. What what's going on? The council has to approve. You know the new hires or or what have you. Um. Well, Tommy offered to uh, an amendment to get them to get do away with that resolution or an amendment to allow him to hire when he wanted to hire, so long as it was within his budget. And that's what he's trying to do here, that the council yeah. wouldn't have any oversight on the creation or the hiring of any person, so long as he was under the approved budget that the council approved at the first of the year. And, you know, you bring up a good point. Uh, he might should have done this like when he first came in. What was that guy's name that he was trying to get appointed as CAO? Uh, what was that guy's name? There I was, don't know. It was part of the Three Amigos thing. Uh, gosh. Well, oh, a, a Shane scruffy, Cheatham? Yeah, Shane Cheatham. Scruffy, chubby guy from South Bozier. That's right. I remember yeah. him. Maybe Tommy should have done that, you know, when Tommy said, he was going to stand behind Shane. Shane was his guy, blah, blah, blah. But I digress. Uh, and our Ryan Haygood says, he does better not talking. Yeah, I agree, so, Ryan. Which is why he's going to do a tag team here in just a second. Uh, hey, Terry Cassiola and Michael Ferris and Ryan Haygood. Okay, uh, let's let Tommy finish that thought. Yeah. Again, why do we got to hold up? Come on, we got to put it off again. Um, I don't remember getting an email. Yes, sir. We emailed everybody. Yes, sir. Emailed everybody. I've, talk, I've come and talked to everybody. Uh, and I, I, I talked to you, what, yesterday or the day before? You now, this is funny. Agenda. We didn't talk about the ins and outs of it, though. I know, but I mean, but why? <laughs> That's, that one little exchange right there. Hold on. Well, I talked to you yesterday. Yeah. Like you said it was going to be on the agenda. Oh, I know, but I, I still talk to you. I mean... <laughs> Ryan, you're right. He does better, uh, yeah, just shutting up. But anyway, here we go. We, we, we've been talking about this for a while. Why are, you, why are y'all holding it off again? Uh, keep so on putting it off, keep on putting it off. So we can talk some more about it. <laughs> so this whole time, y'all haven't talked about it. <laughs> a whole lot of not talking going personally, on. Personally, no. And we may want to talk about it. I don't have a vote, it. sir. I'm talking about y'all, the guys that vote on this. And we hadn't talked. Well, I haven't talked to everybody about it, no. I don't know if they have. This whole exchange is just amateur hour. Any other discussion on this <laughs> item? <laughs> Awkward love, silence and Darby. Love, Any other discussion? I love Darby. Calm, cool, collective. He's got it. Yeah. All right. Here we go. And the floor is open for comments. 
Discussion. Mando on Cassidy. Wait, but I, I like my CAO. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you. <laughs> Mando. Tag team. Here we go. I know the motion is um, to postpone this, but I do want to share some information from our perspective. Um, based on the city charter, Ordinance 76 of 2019, in its original form and as amended, is invalid for the following reasons. The mayor is exclusively given the authority to appoint or remove any city employees, and the charter also um, prohibits the council from dictating the appointment or removal of any city employees. In section 4.06 of the charter, it states that the mayor shall have the authority to appoint, suspend, or remove any city employee and shall direct and supervise the administration of all departments. The only employees that are subject to council approval are listed in the charter, and those are the department heads. It also allows the mayor, not the council, to authorize appointed city employees to hire within their respective departments. Not only does the charter give the mayor the authority over city employees, including their hiring, it also specifically prohibits the council from participating in the appointment or removal of any city employee in section 3.08. The statement's been made that Ordinance 76 of 2019 is necessary for checks and balances. However, checks and balances already exist, and you'll see an example of that when our finance director presents the monthly report at the end of this meeting. I'm gonna pause it right there for a second. So somebody did their homework. It sounds like somebody's been studying or somebody's educated them a little bit. Somebody might have actually read the code of ordinances. Hmm, imagine that. And I wanna say, to everybody, y'all listen carefully and tell me who we don't hear from in any of this discussion. Like, not a word from one particular person. But all right, here we go. This report is required in Section 6.05 of the Charter and includes budgeted and actual expenditures and revenues. And not only does it include the uh, financials, it also includes a staff update by the Manning Report. The council has the authority to appropriate funds, which is done through the adoption of the annual budget and budget amendments. And the council's approval of the budget authorizes the mayor, as the chief executive officer of the city, to expend those budgeted funds for that fiscal year. In the city charter and in state law, the office of the mayor is recognized as the chief executive officer of the city and is tasked with overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the city. Hiring employees falls within the day-to-day -day operations and thus falls under the mayor's authority. To be clear, the mayor is not asking to exceed the authority granted to him by the charter. We recognize that any positions that exceed the approved budget, including the Manning Report, require approval of the city council by ordinance. The city charter vests the council and mayor with different powers to create separation and balance of power, which is essential for good government. We've spent a great deal of time discussing and researching this issue. Multiple Louisiana Attorney General, Attorneys General have issued opinions that deem ordinances that infringe upon the authority granted to the mayor, they are invalid. There's also legal precedence from the Louisiana Supreme Court that supports our position. And additionally, before asking you to repeal this ordinance, Mayor Chandler obtained a legal opinion specific to Bossier City from an outside that. attorney who also confirmed that Ordinance 76 of 2019 violates the charter and therefore it is invalid. Ooh, interesting. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so I, I, now look, you're going to take the Chandler side tonight and I'm going to take the uh, look, I hate, side tonight. Well, I hate to say it, but... I, I would lean more towards Tommy on this deal, as surprising okay. as it may be. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, you be Team Tommy, and I'm going to be Team Council. So Team Tahoe. Te you're Team Tahoe, and I'm I'm Team... Uh, team. Queen, you're on Queen David's side. I, I'm Yeah, I'm going to play with team, Queen David's team tonight. Good who, who was absent from the meeting, by the I gotta way. Wrap, and that, i got to wrap my head around this. Yeah. Whew. Okay, so did you? She just gave the answer as to where we're headed here. Mm -hmm. the The council. So guess what? The council approves the budget at the first of the year. 
and approves the amendments to the budget throughout the year. So, okay, Tommy the Chandler, and y'all want your way? You want to hire and fire? So you hire somebody? Well, guess what? The council just makes a uh, resolution the next meeting to amend the budget for whatever that position was and cut it. Yeah, but if Tommy was smart, that's what he would do because it would force their hand and he could run with that to the press, but he's not smart enough to do that. A a prime example, again, is Shane Cheatham. Now, the CAO may be a department head in the... the, uh, code of ordinances I I honestly hadn't looked it up to see what those positions are but let's just use that for an example the only reason that they did not approve Shane Cheatham as CAO is because they were being vindictive that's it yeah but that's as as long as long as his salary look I'm let me let me make my position clear as far as which side on this to me as long as the the mayor is Task with the ability to appoint people basically hire and fire them. As long as it's within budget, he should be able to do that. And it should just be a dog and pony show, introduce the person to the council, mm-hmm. unless it's a department head. And she, Amanda's going to bring up another point, so I hate to argue with you, Jeff Sad. I appreciate your comments, but yes, she did do her homework. Uh, because she's fixing to make the point here in a minute about another ordinance that they did where they're just literally sidestepping the mayor. And I get it. I understand the history on why, but I got to side with the mayor should be able to hire and fire people without having to go in front of the council every stinking time. I mean, that's just stupid. With the exception of the ones that are explicitly spelled out in the city charter. Well, I don't think that's the case, but and let's go ahead and let's keep playing. Let's dig okay. in and peel this onion back more. <laughs> All right, here we go. Currently, there are 14 departments, excluding fire and police, that have a total of 27 vacancies. These other departments provide essential services to our citizens. Denying the mayor the authority to hire employees to fill these vital roles is a disservice to the citizens that we all serve. We are asking that you repeal Ordinance 76 of 2019 and allow the mayor to fulfill his responsibilities and obligations to the citizens of Bossier City. I got to agree with our friend Ryan Haygood, Amanda for mayor. Tommy may as well. He could just step aside and be a figurehead. Well, he does that anyway. He just does selfies. But anyway. Well, I, I think she has to live in the city, doesn't she? I guess so. So that excludes yeah. her. Yeah. yeah, I think that excludes her. Anyway. Uh, Okay. She should she should sit where Tommy is. Tommy could still be mayor. She should just I, take Tommy's seat. Tommy can sit out there in the gallery I, and fill up one of the cricket chairs out there. I, I'm I'm still not convinced. I mean, I'm still team council. Okay. Well let's let's hear what Team City Council Chris Smith has to say. Oh, my team member. Yeah. Get on yeah, Get him, boy. Go. Mr. President, may I make a comment? Uh, sure. Let's... <clears throat> If we have 27 vacancies, which I believe the Manning report says that, all 20, or we have 36 vacancies. I excluded fire and police oh, fire and based police. on the amendment you had um, Those 27 employees should have already had resolution. Wait a minute. Is, he just, is it just me or is he talking really loud for some reason? Well, I did up the volume, but he's well, talking louder than normal. He's talking louder than normal, and it, it, it's almost like he, he sounds haggard, like he's tired or something. Mm, I, well, I think he does actually say that here in a minute. I mean, I, I don't know. Something, he, must have been, he must have been, like, overworked or something. I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. All right, here we go. It's come before this council to advertise those positions. If those department heads have not asked for the budgetary um, uh, authority to <laughs> move forward in hiring, that's frankly on the department head. That's but they have a, the budgetary budget authority was granted in the so, annual budget that was approved. 
All right, so let's talk about the annual budget. And, and I really, I had no desire to talk about this. I feel like we've spent an astronomical amount of time and money on something that literally does not impact this city at all. But now I want to pause right there. He literally just said that the decision to hire and fire has no impact on the city. He, he said they've had countless, you know, discussions and talked about it endlessly. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that was what he was. He did say, to. he did say that also. Yeah. <laughs> he did say that also. All right, here we go. <laughs> you know me, I like to pull sound bites for people and use them. Oh, I know. <laughs> but anyway. I I, know, I didn't know that about you. <laughs> no, here we go. Since we're going to talk about it, let's talk about four months ago, five months ago, um, and Ms. Phyllis can pull the ordinance up so we can get accurate dates for the record. There was a resolution that came before this council, just like every other meeting, we have resolutions to hire somebody for a position that did not exist in the city budget. <clears throat> However, the resolution that came before this council said that there was no change to the budget, that the position was there, that it was a net neutral to our operating budget. But had that been passed and had that person been hired, that would have altered the budget because that position did not exist. And, and when it was go ahead, just sorry. and when it was found out that that position didn't exist, we did not authorize that and that, that employee was never hired. However, it was only caught because a resolution was turned into the city council. It was not caught by the finance director. It was not caught by the de uh, department head that authored the uh, resolution. Hey, wait a minute. Who authorized all those people? Oh, the city council. Okay, I just want to make that little point. Yeah, but I, but I think the difference here, this is over the mayor and the council wanting to hire somebody for a position that doesn't exist and wasn't uh, oh, budgeted I, for. I, I agree and, 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 and not and, familiar with that position, but his point is it's checks and balances, but literally everybody that he listed off just got vetted by the city council. So whose lap does it fall on? He can't blame that one on Tommy. Okay, okay. Well, well what I want to know is, is, who voted to approve the overtime pay for Manshack during the ice storm uh, back, you know, during the uh, marriage race between Walker and Tommy Chandler? Well, um, if I remember right, didn't we do a show on that? Oh, I think we did. I'm just One wondering. I mean, because yeah. those, that was work and jobs that weren't approved. And I, I mean, I'm just wondering, <clears throat> that wasn't in the budget. That wasn't approved by the council. Um, I mean, did they get paid? Wait, what do you think? You damn right they got paid. Who pulls the purse strings? Well, I'm pretty sure that the payments got made after Who? the CAO was gone, and there was no CAO. There was a vacancy in the CAO but, position. But that's my point: is they can't have their cake and eat it too, because the city council's made it very clear multiple times they pull the purse strings. Well, apparently they don't. If, yeah, if I, 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 no, they control the budget. No, no, sir. No, sir. Oh, if if there is extra money laying out there, obviously the council didn't have to approve paying Manchak overtime at an extraordinary rate during an ice storm, in which they're not contracted to do. So there's no report anywhere. There's no finance report, and this extra money, uh, just nobody no, knows. No, we, we got no. We got the invoices. That's what right. I'm saying. It didn't go before the council. You had a mayor that did it, or a mayor's office that did it. I, I'm just, I'm just wondering how that happens. Maybe with no checks and balances, like the mayor and or you and team mayor are advocating for. Maybe. There will be more of that, more. But I'm just saying happen. those checks and balances happen when the ice storm happened. I mean, they were already in place. Well, that ice storm was, was after 2019. Well, no, what I think happened was, was the mayor of then maybe approved some extracurricular stuff in the hopes that they were going to get an emergency declaration money or emergency stuff. And 
maybe it did, maybe it didn't come through. I think it ultimately did come through, but it wasn't a justified expense because they have a contract. That's word salad. The city controls the budget. The city gets budgetary reports. The city. Uh, I mean, the the city council. council. The city council didn't approve that. Oh, so Tommy just wrote a check and nobody thought to double check it? No, no, no. Tommy wasn't the mayor then. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Tommy. You're right. Uh, Low Walker just cut a check and signed it himself. And out of his personal account, where'd that check come from? And the, and the city council reviews the budget and reviews all expenditures, right? Well, I think, right? they're, I think they're supposed to, but uh, just like Walter Obigby Carriageway and the Shed Road. I mean, if there's if there's an They've Arizona approved all mission, that money. They've approved all mission, that money. If they don't call it out, I mean, look, does the mayor not have a fiduciary responsibility? Sure he does, but... Neither Tommy nor Lowe was really going to stand up and say anything. That's not the point. The point is they can't have their cake and eat it, too. Well, they're all having their cake and eat it, too. Well, the, your, that's true. Your, your that's mayor's true. office, they're having their cake and eat it, too. And my council, they're having their cake and eat it, too, because we're not calling it out, and you're not calling it out either. But at least maybe we should all be on the same page, right? You would think, but that is certainly not the case. And we right, hold so. each other accountable. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's let's continue on. It was not caught by the mayor's office. It was only caught by this city council, and it prevented us from having to hire somebody and then eventually lay that person off because we didn't do our due diligence. And that is all this budgetary restriction does is to make sure, give an extra set of eyes that we are not hiring somebody that is not budgeted and if it's and the 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 fact of the matter is it is a resolution so if somebody quits today while we're in this council meeting or they're terminated that department head can turn a resolution in to be read in two weeks at the next meeting And the very next day, they can then proceed and hire. If there is one position in this city that will completely disrail the whole operation of the city over 13 days, 14 days, then we need to reevaluate who we have as department heads. Now, and don't get me wrong, I I still like Chris Smith, but he's being a little overly dramatic there. Well, I mean, look, if he's saying that if there's a position that needs to be hired that can't wait 13 days, you know, at the longest for the request to come before the city council, if that position is so important that's not a department head position, maybe we need to reevaluate the whole organization of the city. But that's, that's not the point. And Amanda does a good job of bringing up what the real point is here in just a second. So here we go. And we need to re- reevaluate how we have things structured because one position should not derail the entire operation of the city of Bossier. So I will say on the position that you're talking about that the resolution came forth, I sat in all of the budget meetings and that was a misunderstanding in converting a part-time position to full-time, um, but there was no change to the budget. It would not have impacted the budget because the impression what the understanding was that was going well, it was going to be net well, neutral it well, was clear as in the well, staff in a way no wait a minute why why was somebody getting two part-time positions and you know was it more beneficial to them to be the to have these two part-time positions and then moving somebody to a full-time position and oh by the way it was going to be uh net neutral you know but then Chris goes on here in a second and talks about, well, it's the benefit packages. And I'm just wondering if Chris was talking about the person that moved from City Hall, the secretary of the mayor, to the manager of the Civic Center so that they could get these benefits. And then when the council took the benefits back or, or changed the, the, the nature of the job at the Civic Center, oh, then that person has to move back to the mayor's office. Mm, good point. Uh, well, so Chris did a good job of throwing a red herring out there, a related red herring, granted, and unfortunately, Amanda took the bait. 
But you bring up a good point about some of these other mysterious positions that have been created that weren't really positions. I mean, well, but here, here's the thing. If you don't have, as Chris said earlier, another set of eyes to look at these moves, you know, if you just allow the mayor to do it and the council has no oversight, they don't have, they don't get to see it. They don't get to oversee until beginning of the year when the budget comes in. I didn't at, now to, to be clear, I didn't look at the uh, uh, city charter to see does or and maybe you know or maybe somebody in the, the comments knows does the city council have to approve new positions or how do city positions get created so in other words let's say the the one of the fire districts decides they need an extra fireman does that position well, have to get created by the city council or do we not well i i think it does but i i think what they're the mayor's office and what amanda are trying to do here is they're trying to allow their department so long as they stay under budget so let's say they have a budget for 10 people they reduce the they they combine let's say they combine four of the positions to create one new position that's paid at the salary of those four new positions of those four old positions then the next year they come back and say oh we need more manpower we can't do the job we've only got five people or six people we need right. four more people you know it's you know but you're not going to know it for a year you're understaffed and oh by the way the whole department's done fell apart and gotten a bond and you're in a money bond you're in a money pinch but that still didn't answer the question or maybe you did maybe i didn't hear it correctly but that still didn't answer the question do we know if that position has to be created by the city council? And I'm not arguing that the city council shouldn't be involved in creating positions, but do we know it? it and I'm just using firemen I, as an example. I think Michael Ferris is on top of it. He said, we just need to let Manshack run the whole city. But I agree. Chandler needs to get out of the way. The we city need to, council needs to get out of the way. Just let Manshack uh, do it all. Appoint Rutt and Buck to run the city and make all the hire and fires. Yeah, and let him run go. the Cypress District at the same time. Problem solved. Good idea, Duke. Good idea, Michael Ferris. If I could vote for you for police juror, I certainly would. <laughs> there we go. All right. Part-time and full-time were classified. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, we paid different amount as far as, two part -time as, benef positions. as benefits. It was for, two part-time positions for one full-time. And right, it didn't but the benefit translate package is different. correctly on the... Um, Manning report. The the fact of the matter, I don't think anybody was trying to do anything nefarious back then. I think it was just an oversight and uh, and a mistake, but it was a mistake that was caught. That and frankly, I didn't sit on this council back in two thousand and eight, but Mr. Darby, Mr. Williams, Mr. Montgomery did, and they had to make a pretty difficult decision back then. A decision that I know they didn't want to have to make and a decision that I know they promised themselves they would never get into this situation again. And I care an awful lot about the city of Bossier City, an awful lot, and I never want to have to be in this chair and have to make that decision. And I think that anything we can do to help mitigate that, we're not telling the mayor not to hire. We're just trying to make sure that mistakes don't happen again. Because at one point in time in 2008, mistakes happened in 2023 a mistake almost happened and so all we're saying is let's just work together so we don't have to lay a good person off because these are real people that we're talking about here absolutely they are but that still strings, doesn't Chris. give the council the authority to infringe on the mayor's authority that's granted to him by the charter and bam. Yeah, but look, he's bam now i'm not saying she's right because no, no, right. Ryan well, Hagel was correct. Only a court's going to decide this. Well, right. And, and, and look, I, I mean, I think probably, I mean, look, Tommy and Amanda and them ain't going to be jumping out there if they don't know that they're right on this. I mean, he ain't going to have this swagger without <laughs> kind of knowing. He, he's, he's, he's finally got one on his side, a win and, and uh, something, you know, a hill to die on that he can win on. But 
on that token, I mean, Chris is right, and Chris doesn't even know. Back during the time, I mean, look, freaking at the fire department, you had Sammy Halfen creating positions out of thin air. He he was freaking doing it while he's off going on going giving guitar lessons as a fire chief during the day. I mean, and he's got he's hiring, creating all these jack wagon positions to do all. I mean, to look powder his nose and crap. I mean, there was no accountability. It was it got out of hand, and the council right. reeled it in. They well, had to reel and, it in because the mayor not, wasn't doing it. Do you think to be Tommy clear. Chandler? Do you think Tommy Chandler is going to be more accountable than Low Walker oh, and Jimmy Hall and all them? I don't think Tommy's going to go hog wild. He couldn't get, even get a CAO appointed. He had to go through what three people to get to her. I but, mean, but, come but on, that, that's it's that not like evil, he's going to create a powder the nose position. Tommy's not that smart. That's the evil council people. I mean, he look, he didn't get named Tahoe Tommy for no reason, and no, that's true. just like we reported department heads and a non-city employee driving the Tahoe around as a designated driver. I mean, there, I said it. Say oh, it ain't true. I'm not saying, Say to be clear, true. to be clear, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be checks and balances and accountability. I'm just saying, give him all the rope he wants to hang himself with. Because as mayor, he should have the authority to do that within certain guidelines and it shouldn't be I, I forget who it was said i think it was barry butler said the city council should not be micromanaging the hiring and firing positions that's that's my point all right here we go you got another one you got another no, point I, no, but, no i agree but i mean hell they all shouldn't be making the decision oh, because I, in my opinion the council and the mayor's office they haven't been responsible i mean oh, that's true shed road crossing nobody called the errors and emission policies uh, um, policy. I mean, yeah. it was whose responsibility we, we highlighted it. It was man checks, but nobody, th th they all want to play nice. Nobody wants to hold anybody accountable when it's a shortcoming. They'll just have, they got, they'll go to that free piggy bank, which is all of y'all watching the show, the taxpayers to make up the difference. N nobody wants to do anything other, different than that. I mean, is that is that a city owned? Speaking of of accountability and all that, um, is that a city Tahoe? Do we know that right? All right, let's hit play. <clears throat> the I mean, the Budget Act is very clear. Any variances, the mayor is required by state law and by charter to bring anything that's going to be. Um, that's going to require an amendment to the budget has to come before the council. If it's hiring an additional person, if the budget is going to be short, if there, any additional money has to come before the council in the form of an ordinance. But the day-to-day -day operations, money. it is. We had a meeting that was supposed to be scheduled for last week that got postponed and there was a hiring position. So that they are in effect three weeks now. Um, the job market is stop. incredibly stop. competitive right. Stop, right, right now right, to right. retain any additional money has to come before the council. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, if you're creating a budget, and let's say you're a department head, if you're creating a budget, every year your budget will be what? Will, you, will your, your budget ever go down? Oh, well, it's a government deal. It's never going to go down. But, but that's, that's my point. Right. No matter what, if if you at the beginning of the year you submit a budget and the council approves or not approves it, I mean, and so then throughout the year, if you the department head decide, ah, hey, you know what, I don't like Rex and Duke and Bozier White, we're going to cut them, and hey, we're going to hire Sobo Live. Mm -hmm. You know, they can do it, and. Mm -hmm. So long as they're and and maybe they cut, uh, you know, one of the other little shows and they pay Sobo Live twice, you know, so long as they're under budget, the council will never see it. I mean, I'm just saying, if you if you change it and you the don't council, allow the but council, the council oversight, will, the council will see it as long as they read the reports like they're supposed to. She just said. She just said that so long as it doesn't go over the budget, 
Right. You know, it, it, it has to go over the budget to come before the council. No, to come before the council for approval. But if the but, council's going to get their right. periodic budgetary reports. They but read so them as, or kind yeah, of read them during the meetings periodically. Yeah, yeah. But the budget's never if 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 they say okay, we're going to spend twelve thousand dollars on employees every month for the whole year, so long as they don't go over twelve thousand per month every year, then that's all the council hears. But if they make a bunch of changes so that they can fluff one person up to make twelve thousand dollars a month versus you know, five people that cost $12,000 a month and they cut all those people no. so they can butter, Here, butter one person up. Well, but here's the council the, will never know until after the fact the following year. Here, Here's the check and balance that or, I propose. And the, again, it may be part of the running off the tracks or, and it may be part of the ordinances right now. I don't know. Again, I didn't read them that thoroughly, but the positions should be set and to create a new position and that's the reason i was asking that earlier to create a new position would probably require either city council approval or the city council or there should be an ordinance you know if, if they create a i don't know department of social media for the fire department then there should be an ordinance stating that this will be comprised of you know three people that will have a total budget of x number of dollars and that sets the limit right there. Now, if they come back next year and say, look, the social media is blown up. We're getting tons of donations for the fire department, and we need to raise that to five people and set the cap even more, then they propose that in the next budget, and the council approves it or not. I mean, I'm keeping it pretty simplistic, but that's the way it should work. Well, okay, so they they come to the council and say we need three social media professionals for the fire department to promote social media, and the council approves it, and then they only hire one and pay that one for three. They made that change because they're still under budget. So then the next year they come back, submit the same budget, and ask for an additional social media person. Well, we we only had one. No, but the, we need another. The, We've got two. The city, the city council should set the salaries or be involved. That's that's what either I didn't state it correctly or you missed it, but I probably didn't state it thoroughly. The city council sets those parameters or should be involved in that process. And that prevents all that. It's simple. But I think that's what the mayor's office is advocating for is to get the council out of it altogether. Well, maybe so. And yeah, more power, you know, but. I'm saying it should be a relatively simple process. Let, let's use firemen, for example. They set up a new fire district and they say, okay, and I don't know how fire districts are created. I'm just bear with me here for a second. But they say, okay, we're going to create a new fire district and this fire district is going to be composed of a district chief, an assistant chief. Their salaries are capped at X amount of dollars and we're going to have six firemen for this particular district with maximum salaries of $65,000 each. Now they can, they can start them all. I, again, I'm, I know it's probably not the way it works, but they can start them off at less than that, but up to that cap, that's basically the way it should be done. And if they want to raise the cap, if they say, look, this fire district's really kicking butt and we need to be able to pay them more to hire more people, they come before the city council and say, look, we would like to raise the salary caps on the firemen from 65000 okay. to 75000 Ruth Pope Johnson just posed a great, great, great point to this thing we're discussing right here. Right, she says, on. I don't have a position on this, but if we have a full-time city attorney... Why do we go outside to get a regulatory <laughs> opinion resulting in additional costs to be incurred by Bozier taxpayers? Great point, Ruth. Rex, did the council get an opportunity to approve this expenditure or this do hiring? We, do we, I was being a little facetious <laughs> earlier, but do we know if the lawyer even charged him for that advice? Well, you know damn well they charge. I mean, ain't no lawyer uh, doing nothing for free pro bono for the city of Bozier. They were going, they had their count machine out going, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. <laughs> That's exactly what they were doing. <laughs> hey, we'll see. Hey, I do want to address the point. So I asked earlier if our good friend Ryan Hague <laughs> knew if um, Amanda's Tahoe was city-owned or not. And he says, yes, as a, ma as a matter of, well, I have lived this, but as a matter of fact, uh, you talked about it on your show. So... <laughs> 
Forgive me, Ryan. I said at the beginning of this show, I was kind of not all here. Whatever. Look, look, I, y'all uh, got to realize we forget about a keep, lot of keep stuff. Keep us in check and remind us of things that we say, please. Yeah. I mean, we do make mistakes. I don't remember it because I really don't remember if she had a tie or not. I don't remember. Yeah. I'm trying to remember that off the top of my head, but maybe we did say it. I don't know. What was the deal with Tommy's secretary taking over the East Bank? That's why he needs oversight. Yeah, true. Okay. Here we go. Let's continue on. Chain people are to get them in the door. We, we don't pay the highest wages. And so when somebody is looking for a job, they need to be able to be hired and get a paycheck as soon as possible. And it does create unnecessary delays. It creates additional paperwork on our department heads when they have to get the resolutions and they have to get them submitted in order to make the, um, the agenda deadline. So it, it's just, it's frankly a violation of the charter and it's unnecessary. Mr. Well, Mr. President, I will, be, to... I will be opposing this today. I'll be opposing it in six weeks. So I don't care. We can make a, we can vote on it today or not. I will still be opposing okay, this. Going... Now, I got to give Chris Smith credit right there. He let his position be well known. Good job, Chris. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to oppose this today, tomorrow, two weeks from now, 10 weeks from now, whatever. I actually, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, you know, some people. I I didn't take him as being rude. I felt him as just being. That's know, his position. Expressing strong conviction on the issue. No, I, I really, truly mean that sincerely. I appreciate him actually standing on his convictions right there. And yeah. just getting it out there. All right, let's let's kind of start wrapping this up. I think it's in the floor. best interest uh, of the city for a council member to to speak now uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Williams or oh, Mr. Mr. Hammonds well Phyllis didn't we do something an ordinance back in 2010 when all this happened yes like, sir there was an ordinance that was done in 2010 that ordinance was repealed in 2018 to do and another then, one um, and then that ordinance uh, and then another one was a, was passed with the 2018 ordinance and then there was an ordinance that was passed in 2019 that repealed the 2018 ordinance and and changed oh, changed wow, some wow, things wow. with it and that was what the latest one was until the 63 of 2023 was just passed so it was basically the same thing though they're the, pretty much they're the, all the same so, it, there, there were some there you know one of them talked about holiday issues you yeah. know the the um, previous administration was given holidays and declaring holidays uh, that weren't uh, approved in the um, in the holiday book that the all right so let's wrap this up because I didn't time stamp uh, they voted to put it off till August 15th if I remember correctly so that's where it ended up they just kicked the can down the road again yeah they did and I mean, why didn't they do, why didn't they put it up to a vote? Now that's the question. And, and notice, folks, who we haven't heard from tonight. I mean, there is an empty chair there, so I'm not talking about Queen David. So that narrows the choices down. Who have we not heard from in this meeting? Who is actually at the meeting? But the next, the other more important question is: Why are they kicking the can down the curb? Why don't they just vote on it? Well, I think Chris Smith was ready to vote on it right then. And Tommy, the Chandler was like, y'all take it up one way or the other. Take, make a move. Go ahead and do something. Go yeah. ahead and do something. Show your cards, folks. Yeah. So, well, we're going to come back to this before we, we get to the crescendo of this issue. But, hey, I wanted to introduce everybody to the new public information officer, uh, Lewis Johnson. 44, 21, 212 mark, because okay. uh, he gets up here and he gives a report on the little natural disaster that took place in Bozier. Let's play a little, maybe a two times speed of Lewis Johnson. Sounds good. Let me crank this up to two times speed because it was kind of long winded. Give him a taste. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, and members of the council. We're going to um, take just a few minutes, if you would, and share with you a after action re uh, review of the storm. And its primary purpose is to come back and look at the things that uh, we learned from that, to give a, a report of what we did, identify things we did well, things we can do better. Also, be advised that this action, action review, after action review, has been given to the department heads, administrative staff, for the same reason. But we wanted to share it with the council also. Uh, we found that, and we know that in order to manage an incident successfully, there are a few things that need to be in place. One of those things is uh, planning, communication, and information, logistics, and resources. Now, uh, one of the things that caused this particular storm to uh, be difficult for the entire community is that it was not planned for. They knew it was going to have a storm, but even the um, weather meteorologists and others did not um, predict that it would be 80 miles an hour and that type of thing. Well, wait a minute. It's not like this is the first time we've had 80 mile an hour winds. And he just said, but they didn't predict we were going to. I think they did predict. I mean, I remember getting the warnings. I was like tightening everything down, batting, yeah. batting it down the hatches. So, and and yeah. the city, and what's scary to me, and I think I mentioned this maybe the last show, is you're telling me that the city, we don't have a think tank sitting there that comes up with these scenarios like, <laughs> oh, I don't know, the Department of Homeland Security or somebody <laughs> that plan for what if the electricity goes out? You mean all them guys over there behind uh, uh, Bozier Medical Center that are supposed to be thinking and planning on all this stuff? Yeah, did know. they not the ever they... plan? Was there never a scenario discussed where what That's if basically point. 80, 90 percent of the city loses power for, you know, a relatively extended period of time? Did that thought never occur to anybody? Well, I mean, maybe they're too busy over there trying to look at Facebook and social media posts that they need to report to CISA to get pulled down as disinformation. I don't know. Maybe they're still wrapped up on COVID. But look, I didn't want to take a, a shot at Lewis Johnson here. I just wanted to point yeah. out that they've got a PIO that is making a presentation to the council. He's got a PowerPoint. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think this this is a pretty good gig here. Now, the, the one rub... I mean, I listened to his whole spill, and it was a good spill. He 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 really articulated everything well, spoke well. He doesn't talk that fast as we got it at two times yeah. speed. Right. I, sorry about that, uh, Lewis Johnson. But at the forty six forty two mark, he on his PowerPoint. There's one portion here in particular, and, and let's play that for a second. I think we'll catch it. Let's play that for a second. There's one part in here I want to point out, Rex. Okay. Uh, we prioritize our internal communication um, and also our external communication. Wait, wait. Um, the communication was impacted, obviously, because no one had power. And as we look at the things that we did well, we've also identified some things that we can do better, some areas in which we can improve. And one of the things that we commit is that we're going to make sure we have a stronger and better social media presence to get <laughs> <laughs> gosh i wonder where they got that idea from I, I i don't know i mean it's almost as if somebody in media on social media must have talked about their lack of social media the lack of social media uh, but, well but, but, but in his defense he didn't want to drop all those posts down about the golf tournament you know, and have them take the hit in the algorithm. He wanted them to, you know, stay top of the fold, so he couldn't do that much communication on social media. That's right, but there's another golden nugget right here, so let it keep playing. Okay, here we go. Get the information out. Um, Chairman, I mean, uh, Councilman Smith did a good job in assisting that, and we're going to uh, make sure that's our priority as we move forward. But our communication, information was communicated. Uh, Swepco was in direct communication with our office, um, speaking pr pr nearly directly with our CAO, Ms. Cunningham, Ms. Nottingham. And whenever Amanda got that information, she made sure that it was put out as it relates to how much outage there is, what coverage, when will we expect them to get the power back, and things like that. Okay, maybe they have a secret Facebook page or social media presence I'm not aware of. In their defense, it very well may be, but where the hell was Amanda putting this out? Well, wait a minute. Does it get better? Keep listening. All right. So Swepco is putting that out periodically, and when we got the information, we put the information out as, as soon as we received it. Information to our citizens. 
Um, we tried our best to get that out. We have numerous uh, press releases that went out to all of the media outlets. We have um, those. Now, wait a minute. That right there. Now, at one time, we got all the media press releases. Yeah. I don't recall seeing any of those press releases. That's correct. But now, maybe they don't consider us press anymore. And that's okay. We're amateur journalists, well, pundits. I think, I think there may be something to that, Rex, because I specifically here recently sent a request for an interview with the police chief of Bossier City, and I also sent it to the mayor's office. I still have yet to this day got a response regarding that interview. Well, they're probably sending ours directly to spam. Are we going to have to start sending certified mail? I guess so. No, I know we need to, we got to keep sending it to the city attorney. Uh, Obviously he's the only one that'll listen to us. Yeah. When he wants to. All right. Shall, shall we keep going with this? <laughs> well, since I mean, he's not, trying to put it, lipstick on a pig. I give him credit. He's doing the best he can with what he has to work with. And you know, that's not much considering who the mayor is. Well, that, that was the only points I wanted to make of this. Good job on Lewis Johnson making a presentation. Bad job on saying that you're talking to all the media because arguably all of the people that watch our show, the majority are Bozier people. And I, well, I mean, hey. You, I, I, you, I, I, hold on a second. I want to kind of correct Michael Ferris there. He said, let me put the comment back up. He says, gosh, what a great idea. Have a larger social media presence during a power outage. What were the vast majority of people doing? They were on social media, even during the power outage. My wife was about to have a conniption fit because we didn't have internet access at the house and we have terrible cell phone coverage. So, you know, we had to go outside and stand on our heads on one leg and, you know, the whole deal to get cell phone coverage. And when we were driving around town, and I, of course I was guilty of it too, uh, checking social media. And but, here, but here's the good news, Rex. Here's okay. the good news. Since it's blatantly obvious that Bossier City has taken us off of the press releases and not We're out of the loop. Us everything that they're talking about or whatever, it it makes me more intrigued and more interested again back in what's going on in Bossier City. So I'm going to start digging again. And I want to point out, thank you, Bossier City, for ri raising our interests again. I mean, Rex... We just got a video of a city employee in a city vehicle just today. I, you know, we may show it in a show or two. We're not going to show it tonight. We're not going to go there. I know you. I right. see you looking uh, away. You're uh, in I'm pull, about to pull the trigger. Don't pull the trigger. We're not going to go there. But what I wanted to say is, is just because we haven't been talking about Bozier City doesn't mean that we don't have stuff for Bozier City. Again, right. like I said. Got a video just today of a city employee in a city vehicle. Uh, I'll just uh, let, let me just say this: there is no law that says you may exceed the speed limit when certain conditions apply. There is no law that says that. Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't but, mean you get to either. <laughs> just because everybody's in the left-hand lane. Cruising at 83 miles an hour doesn't mean you can legally do but, it either. But that's fine. You know, we're not media. Y'all don't want to acknowledge us and you don't want to give us no information. That's all right. We got information and we can get information. Plenty of information about Bozier. We've done it before and we were trying to move off of Bozier. We thought y'all had your stuff in order and you were moving in the right direction. But obviously our job was not done. So, yeah. hey, boys, we're back. Okay. Uh, shall we keep going? Let's keep going. Information recorded uh, and saved, of course. Okay. Uh, uh, so we had swept right. Good. I fell asleep while he was talking. Yeah. I, let's see. I, I did too. So <laughs> let's go to the 5950 mark and, and, and go just, if you can, a hair before that mark. Okay. Because let's this right see. here, they, they're all taking, you know, maybe the 5940. Is yeah, probably good. I think I'm about there. All but right. basically, Tommy Chandler, everybody was taking their turns and thanking everybody on a job well done during the storm. Patting each other on the back. Yeah, yeah you, you know, y'all did such a great job and everybody. But Tommy was going out of his way in particular on the thank yous. And then he takes a shot 
here at the end. Interesting. Here we go. To help, thank uh, them to get the generators, Steve Ford and all them getting generators for Shady Grove. Everybody worked together. That's what it, it was. It was amazing how everybody worked together. Ben Rochebach didn't get no sleep, and I appreciate you for doing that, Aww. sir. Whoa! I mean, oh, Ben Rochebach. How much is that going to cost, and is the council going to approve that? Well, that's a different, separate deal. And besides that, it Tommy did. was supposed to audit Manchak anyway. He, well, that's but he ain't audited. Oh, wait a minute, did he audit Manchak? I don't does, think so. Does he even know that they're a contract employee and that they were getting overtime during the ice storm in the previous administration? I wonder if he knows that. Mm, good question. I mean, but I'm wondering if they're going to all bill for over. He's, is he thanking them for the billing that they're going to put? on this i mean uh, i'm uh, i'm wondering how does that work <laughs> so many questions and well not very many answers i mean maybe that equate but he, he wasn't finished we got to go oh, back to that okay okay hold on well, hang on that wasn't even the golden nugget all right here we go and they did a lot too with swepco trying to get things going with swepco everybody in it works for the city it was so great to see them people work together to get this done, and I and I thank them so much. I appreciate them very much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay. Um, and also, what? Well, stop. Ordinance, ordinance seventy six, two thousand nineteen. I look forward to talking to y'all. Get about it. Okay. Ooh, okay. menacing, threatening. I bet Bubba Don. Oh, Bubba Don's not even there. But I bet he'd be quaking in his boots if he was in the chair. I look forward to talking to y'all about it again. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I agree with Hey, good. You should have just kept your mouth shut, had Amanda walk back up to the podium, and had Amanda deliver that line. It would have carried more force and weight. I mean, would it? I mean, look, come on. We got to let Tommy have one. I mean, no, not that one. I, I mean, but he, I, I think he's going to win this one. We may disagree. I think he's going to win this one. I'm not saying he's not going to win it because I think he's generally got, got a lawsuit on his hands potentially well he's going to try but it well we said this earlier but i think it's wrong in in that thought that we said if because the cao you know uh is one of those approved by the council i mean does cheat him cheat him have a leg to stand on if tommy goes through with this good question mr lowry but i I don't know though. I don't think so because I know that in the charter there's something that says in there that the council, you know, has to approve. Uh, probably right with the CAO, but uh, again, I haven't gone back and read it that thoroughly. So uh, that position may require council approval, and we all know how that debacle ended. Okay, so you're going with the I'm mayor's still office Team Tahoe on this particular issue. And not really Team Tahoe so much for the ability of any mayor to be able to hire and fire within constraints. But not being relegated to every two weeks, you got to go in front of the council and wait on them to decide or blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm not in, so, except for certain positions. So, so legally you're saying Tommy wins? I think so, but, you know, but he'd have to sue to win. He'd have to sue to win legally because they ain't going for it. The city council's not gonna, giving up that nut holding power. Well, I think he's going to do it, and I think, but I think they're going to get an attorney general's opinion on the subject, and because uh, it, it, we didn't show it, but Hammonds actually made a resolution to request an attorney general's opinion on the subject. Oh, now, yeah, Jeff Sadow, Jeff Sadow, he's siding with the council on it, yeah. and. He, I think he thinks legally the council has the opinion. I'm going to say this. I'm going to, I'm going to split the difference between y'all, but I'm siding with the council because I still think at the end of the day with the budgetary controls that the council has, you know, to amend or approve budget, they, they can change stuff. I think at the end, they still win. I think Tommy still loses because they'll come back. Know. They'll make an amendment and cut him off yeah I, I wouldn't disagree with that so 
Anyway, I know that's riding the fence, but... Uh, it's a good job of riding the fence. You did a wonderful job of it. A anyway, so job. to the 60-something folks watching tonight, we appreciate y'all being yeah. here. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, this little bit of a show was enlightening, and uh, we're going to give y'all all a break from us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, just know that uh, we are planning out some debates. We've already got well, one lined let, out. Let's talk about next week. So next week, Tuesday, will be July the 4th. Oh, ain't nobody going to watch us on July 4th. Nah, we're going to take a break. I'll, I'll post a notice or post a highlights reel or something like that. So let, we'll, we'll skip next week. We'll skip next week, and that'll give us time to work on the debates. Yeah, there you go. Good idea. All right. Well, like Duke said, we appreciate everybody watching. And most of you already know the spill. Uh, if you got an email that you want to send us and you don't want it uh, or want it to be anonymous, go make you a free protonmail.com account. Don't put any identifying information in it. Send an email to bozierwatch at protonmail.com from that account that you make. And we do take a look and read those and uh, get a lot of information from them. You can also, if you want to donate us some coffee money, go to bozierwatch.org or bozierwatch.com. You have the ability to do that there. And uh, I don't know. Uh, that's about all I can think of tonight. That's all I got, my friend. And, uh, you know, hey, find somebody that uh, you care about, show them some love, and, yeah. you know, try to be nice. I agree. See you later, Mr. Lowry. Good night.